G'day folks. I just thought I'd do a little, uh, I suppose you call it a DIY video that people can try at home if they have the right parts. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, especially with such a high rated meter, but I want to monitor how many amps are going through the uh, ATX 12 volt connector on my uh, little micro ATX computer. So, as you can see, I've taken the connector off this dead main board. Um, which is similar, I mean they all have the same pin configuration as far as I've seen, although you ve always verify it. Uh, and the power connector off, just the crappy old used power supply. And we're going to be combining them with the amp meter, a couple of ring terminals, and that should do it. Um, you'll notice they're combined on the board. We're not going to be combining or negative through anything, we're just going to be combining the positive side so positive DC is there and again you can see the pads joined together so I'm going to bridge across the pins typically they all come from the same supply rail although the power supply on my other computer has a secondary 12 volt supply just for feeding the CPUs regulators so I can't just desolder all these connectors from the power supply internally um, like I could on this one like all the yellow wires all terminate on the one 12 volt rail all the red ones are all 5 volt rail and I could just as easily run thick cables out here and combine them all through amp meters and monitor total 12 volt and total 5 volt loads but because my power supply is 3 and I only have one amp meter I'm just going for the um, CPU although eventually if I do get some smaller panel meters like this 30, 30 amp meter would be perfect for the 5 volt rail because it puts out a peak of about 35 uh, the 12 volt two for the CPU is about 17 so I'd expect to see the needle just around here right around the 5 6 amp mark maybe a little bit more if it's been pushed and um, the main 12 volt out of my power supply is I think about 40 amps so I'd have to select specific rating of meters to get an, an easy or accurate measurement of how much current's going through it because of course if the graduation's too too big like this the needle might be sitting here but you can't tell if it's 0.1 amps it'll be like 1 amp or something like that so anyway I'm going to solder this connector up uh, put some ring terminals on it and just shut the PC down or we'll plug it in yeah, I just thought I'd go into a little more detail on what I was saying about combining the wires together uh, some people think they're all on individual pads but they're not uh, in some cases if they're color coded differently like yellow with a black stripe it'll mean it's coming from a separate 12 volt supply but just to confirm you open it up and see all those 12 volt yellow wires are combined on that one pad that's the 12 volt rail that's the 5 volt there all of the red wires are combined on it 3.3 volts again they're all combined and all of the negatives are all combined on the same common pad as well so it's the tidiest way to modify them is to rather than try and cut and shut them all hanging out of the case it's to actually take the board out and desolder them from the board like desolder everything taking note of what goes where and then uh, rewire it after that of course don't mess with the um, power on signal which is the green and a few other different wires in there you don't have to play with them if you just put an amp meter on it an inline amp meter that is don't use a CT meter on DC stuff it doesn't work uh, and yeah you just run a heavier cable like this stuff here which is oh, I can't remember what gauge that is heavy enough for the 5 volt rail though considering how much copper there is combined in all of those it's probably overkill but you'd run a length of that out of the case with a ring terminal on it going across your amp meter so to one side and then have these all bundled together with a ring terminal coming off the other side of the amp meter really easy and they're pretty forgiving these power supplies like like I said they don't combine well they don't have them on separate outputs they're typically all combined if they're the same coloured wire and just open it up to confirm just before you do anything that's all it would be that one odd chance that they are different but typically they're not and you can see why I can this power supply it's just old and manky and the caps are bulging so even though it works it's really they're a dime a dozen I've got millions of power supplies yeah, now this is the PC it's going on and for the reason I'm making it plug and play I'm going it's because it's going on the side cover here and since the side cover has to come off for maintenance and cleaning it means 
shutting the PC down, just simply unplugging it and taking the case cover away. It's also going to have my DC 12 volt meter on it as well. And um, I want everything to be just pluggable. Just unplug it, away you go. That's hot pluggable because it's just coming off one of the floppy drive ribbons, I can just, or floppy drive power connectors. But of course the CPU one, it's just going to mean I'm going to have to shut it down before I unplug it. Uh, no problem there. If I'm pulling it apart to clean it, it's going to be off anyway. So otherwise, there's no real problem with just snipping your um, the two yellow wires on your CPU 12 volt connector and just splicing in the meter. That would work too, but it would make it harder to disconnect because it will be permanently tethered to the power supply until you undo all the ring terminals and things, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, but whereas if you are mounting on the front panel of a tower or something like that, like that, um, you could just extend the, the cut your uh, two yellow wires, extend it out and hardwire it because it doesn't have to come off. Uh, there's two, two different ways of doing it. I'm doing it the more complicated way, but at least that way I can unplug it from this one and plug it into any other computer with that same kind of connector on it. So that's the other bonus. It's easy. You don't have to mutilate your power supply. Like the connector for this power supply will remain intact. Anyway, better get on with the actual project, not just rambling on about power supplies. <laughs> that's always good. And there we go. That's all done. I wanted it to be as long as possible, so I just spliced extra wire onto it. Um, it's ready for test run. I'll run it outside the computer. If the meter behaves acceptably, it'll be alright, but if it's not pulling enough current to get any real reading out of it, then there isn't really much point to it. Uh, I just hot glued that with the tip of the soldering iron. I couldn't find any heat shrink big enough to go over the whole thing. That's just a little bit too small. Oh well. Looks good enough anyway. So I'll set that up, uh, turn the computer off, and see how we go. Oh, there we go. See what happens. This is camera would focus a bit. Oh, about five amps. Just going through boot up, so it's going to vary a bit. Pulling more amps, six, <laughs> about three. With a bigger meter, it'd be more fun because it swings further. Yeah, it's not too bad though. It's doing its job. Yeah. I'll load up Corel Video Studio. That usually pushes this PC to the maximum, trying to save a, a file in high definition. We'll see what happens. Likewise, the voltage and everything's pretty good. Much better than the old power supply, which was down around the 11.5 mark. <laughs> that thing was not happy with me. It's loading up Corel. is with Corel open. I'm smashing together some of the videos I uploaded just for the hell of it. I'm not going to actually save the file, but we'll go output, save file, um, yeah something chunky. H.264 would be big, that's 2.15 gigabytes for a 16 minute video in 720p I think it is. That'll load her up. Not a huge amount of difference though. Yeah, it's just like a steady 6 amps. Oh, well, the meter does work out. That's a good thing. Uh, after all, uh, yeah, it gives you another accurate readout of what's going on in there. Which is just the 12 volt CPU rail. And you see what I mean about the uh, black stripe on the yellow wires indicating it's coming from the 12 volt 2 which is top of 17 amps anyway but no that's working all right thanks for watching there we go the device has been modified now I just have enough clearance to get it past the CPU cooler <laughs>
Yeah, it'll sit just in there nicely. There we go, all finished and working. Should we get rid of that glare? 